What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Kangaroo Black coming back once again, 10 toes down, standing on business, representing my Alabama Crimson Tide. Man, I tell you, boy, this Alabama fan base is losing a damn mind. Boy, they crying and whining, bitching and moaning about these players that's deciding to transfer to other programs. Calling them quitter, quitters, wishing bad on them, talking neg negative about these young men because they decide to move on from the Alabama Crimson Tide. That is the wrong answer because guess what? We got a transfer quarterback in the day from the University of Washington and I haven't heard not one Alabama fan call that guy a quitter. Haven't heard one Alabama fan talk negative about it. Haven't heard one Alabama fan call LT Overton in the quill betraying from Texas A&M who transferred into Alabama. Haven't had not one Alabama fan call them a quitter. Haven't heard one Alabama fan call Demonte Jackson a quitter. He transferred in to USC. All right. So, hey, just like we got players going. Other teams got players leaving, coming to Alabama. But you have yet to call them a quitter. Mm, 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 mm. Seems kind of hypocritical, don't it? Just putting it out there. But all these Alabama fans, they are focused on the hot topic. And the hot topic for the past almost a week and a half is players transferring from Alabama. Let them go. Let them go, man. What is the big deal? This is not the first time Alabama done had players transfer. Like I said, it just seems bad right now because the transfer portal is only open for a couple of teams, Alabama, Washington, maybe a couple of other teams. That is it, and we can't get players in unless they come in to those programs, from those programs. But all, uh, April the 15th, Alabama, the whole entire transfer portal will be open for everybody, and Alabama will be able to get transfer portal players in, okay? So calm the fuck down. I mean, Jesus, man. All this no negativity thrown at these players as transferring is simply Crazy. I mean, you got 40, 50, 60, probably 70 year old grown ass men talking crazy about 17, 18, 19, 20 year old players. Oh, they quit. Hey, what about me? What about the fan? What about me? It ain't about you. It's all about them. Just putting it out the hell. You got some of these grown ass men crying that probably was dead beat ass daddies, but they won't sit and say they quit on their damn children. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. I just wanted to go on my little damn rant and tell all these crying ass Alabama fans to shut the hell up. If these guys want to go somewhere else, that's they damn prerogative. Nobody else's. I mean, Jesus, it's ridiculous. But anyway, what I want to talk about is these team leaders have been making statements, all right? But nobody is talking about these team leaders and what they saying and how they supporting uh, uh, Coach DeBoer, how they decided to forego the draft and come back and play for the University of Alabama and staying committed to the Alabama Crimson Tide. No, we ain't talking about them. We ain't talking about the players that stand committed, that decided to come back with the, when they could have easily left just like everybody else or the, or, or the players that decided to leave. And one of those players who could have went to the draft was linebacker Deontay Lawson. He decided to come back, stand committed to the Alabama Crimson Tide. All right. And, it, and all of these guys I'm going to mention is staying committed after the announcement that Caleb DeBoer would be the head coach. And these guys are speaking highly of Caleb DeBoer. And we even got Alabama fans 
doubting Caleb DeBoer already, even though he haven't coached not one game for the University of Alabama. The Alabama fans think he can't be successful, but that's all right. I'm with these players, just like Tyler Booker said, give him a chance. All right. But anyway, this is what Deontay Lawson had to say. We've had some, some guys leave and wish them well, but that doesn't change the standard at Alabama or our belief in Coach DeBoer. It's going to lead us where we want to be winning championships. We know what we can accomplish and know uh, he's won everywhere he's been. We're going to keep uh, this thing going. It's going to be a wonderful story, and we're ready to embrace it. Even though it might seem a little rough right now with some of uh, the players leaving, this transition has only strengthened the bond between the players who've stayed. We've embraced the change and as a group want to finish what we started. We're not running from change. We're buying in and know we're in good hands. We have full trust in Coach DeBoer and the coaches he's bringing in. He's passionate about it. That's why he's here to win championships and we still have elite players on our roster to do it. I'm sure he will get even more elite players as we go forward because they're going to want to play with him. He also said, Deontay Lawson, roll with us or get rolled over. And I agree. I agree. And yes, we still got elite players on this roster. All right, we still got quarterback Jalen Miro, Ty Simpson, Dylan, Dylan Lundgren from last season. All right, we still got Jam Miller and, and Justice Haynes and Richie Young. And we picked up a four-star running back, Daniel Hill. All right, we still got wide receiver Kendrick Law and Kobe Princess and Jalen Hill coming back. We got a lot of players. That's just on the offensive side of the ball. And we talk offensive line. We got Tyler Book and Jalen uh, uh, Jalen Roberts coming back. Elijah Pritchett. I'm just saying. And uh, most likely we're going to get this offensive lineman from Washington. Remember, they won the Joe Thorpe Award for best offensive line. We're going to get one of them, if not a couple. All right? Defense, man, we got guys coming back. I mentioned all these guys the other day. Tim Keenan, Tim Smith, Jaheim Otis. I mean, Jesus, man. So, hey, it is what it is. Jamarian Latham, we got guys, man. Linebacker, besides Deontay Lawson, Jahad Campbell, Justin Jefferson, guys coming off the bench, Edge Russell, Jonesy Pierre, and daggone uh, Jeremiah Alexander, both four stars. We got players all over this roster. Elite damn players, cornerback. We got a daggone corn, uh, uh, transfer cornerback. I mentioned Amani Jackson from USC, all right? Another cornerback, Jaleel Hurley, four-star. Safety, Braylon Hubbard, a dog, man. Safety, Malachi Moore. Safety, Devontae Smith, both coming back. Come on, man. It's, it's, this damn roster is littered with talent. Four and five stars still up and down the roster. So, come on, man. All this whining and crying about these players leaving – is undamn called for. Jesus. I've ne I mean, I mean, I, we sit and talk about other fan bases. Shit, I might might be even worse. I mean, Jesus. Never heard. I mean, Nick Saban gave us 17 years of greatness. Well, really 16 years because his first year, 2007, wasn't that great. Seven and five wasn't that great. But 16 years of greatness. And now... We don't know how to damn act when change come. We don't know how to act. I mean, Jesus. This is a damn shame, man. It's been a long time since I've seen Alabama fans act this way. Turning on the daggone players, man. Turning on the players. I can't believe it. Even though they decided to transfer. Mm, 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 mm. I ain't never seen a man who don't do what's best for him and his damn family. These guys got the chance to go somewhere for the betterment of their whole entire family, whether it's for money or whatever the reason. 
they can change the life, they they own lives and their whole family life. But what do we do? We call them quitters. <laughs> they quit on us. Well, the most important thing is they damn families. That's all I can tell you, buddy. That's all I can tell you. And hell, you want to talk about what about the fans? What about the fans? All through Nick Saban career, you think he gave a damn about a fan? You think he listened to what the fans said? Hell no. He did what he thought what was, was best for the team. Okay? So these guys are doing what they think is best for themselves. If they ain't, they, maybe they weren't all locked in on Kalen DeBoer in his message. So they decide to move elsewhere. So if you, you got players who ain't locked in to the head coach and his philosophy, why would you want him to stay? That's all I'm saying. But that was what Deontay Lawson said. But I'm going to go ahead. Let me talk about what Tyler Booker said, offensive guard. Let's talk about his statement. He had a lot to say. But anyway, uh, talking about the players that's leaving. I want to wish them well wherever they go. But just because Coach Saban is gone, that doesn't mean the standard is gone. He taught us the standard. It really comes down to why did you come to come to school? Uh, I came to Alabama, obviously, to play for Coach Saban and play to his standard, to be challenged every day and to be held accountable by my teammates, the people in the building and the fans. No amount of money could buy me away from Alabama and my legacy here. Okay, he got that mentality. Not everybody had that mentality. Mentality, But we shouldn't look down on the guys who didn't have the same mentality as Tyler Bull. Like, like Caleb Downs said, I mean, not where well, his daddy, the situ every situation is different. You don't know what Caleb Downs' situation is, was. You don't know those guys who decided to transfer. We don't know their situation on why they decided to transfer. But Caleb Downs' daddy did give some damn clarity. Nick Saban is gone. The daggone, uh, uh, his position coaches is gone. Everybody he formed a relationship wise with for his coaching is gone. But people say, what about the teammates? What about them? What about them? Don't you see they saying they wish them well? But if you ain't rolling with us, you can get rolled over too. And that's what I say. I guarantee you, those guys who transferred had friendships and relationships with those players that stayed and they gonna forever have them down relationships. So hey, it is what it is, baby. But anyway, let's go ahead back, get back what Tyler Booker was talking about. Uh, we're working toward the same goal, and this time, and and this time with his vision. Uh, one of the things the board uh, told the players was non-negotiable was that Alabama team would be family. We're going to win together. The closer we are the better we are. Family, 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 non-negotiable, okay? Everybody's going to be watching. We all know we're going to be the first team after Coach Saban, but that's uh, a chance to only cement our legacy, to go out and win a championship on the Coach DeBoer. Yeah, we lost a few guys, some really good players, but we still got uh, a good young core. And you've seen what Coach DeBoer has done with teams everywhere else. He gets the most out of players, and he knows the kind of players it takes to win championships. Damn right. It do. It do. With our fans and the love of our fans, but they are really, they are really tough. Following the greatest coach of all time is a gutsy thing to do, and it was uh, going to be for whoever they brought in. But Coach DeBoer is wired for it. I'm excited to go out there with him and see what we can do. People counted us out after the Texas game and then the South Florida game this year, and we made it all the way to the playoff. People will count us out again. But uh, <clears throat> people will count us out again because we lost, lost Coach Saban and some guys to the portal. We know what they think of us, so let's go out there and prove them wrong again. You're damn right. People counted the Alabama Crimson Tide out 
way back at the beginning of 2023. Matter of fact, before the season even started, people counted Alabama Crimson Tide out and they wind up SEC champions moving on to the playoffs, okay? A lot of people thought they couldn't do that, okay? So it is what it is, baby. I like the mentality of Tyler Booker and Deontay Lost, Deontay Lost, and this next guy, Malachi Moore, and the rest of them I'm about to mention, okay? These are the guys we should be talking about instead of crying, whining, bitching, and moaning about guys who won't even put on the crimson and white no more. So anyway, but let's, Malachi Moore, another guy who decided to come back and play for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Another guy who stayed committed and buying in to Coach DeBoer. Anyway, you could feel the energy, the pos positive energy, and also how open he was to listening to our opinions, the players' opinions. Uh, we did our own homework as players. This dude has won everywhere. His standard is the same as ours. Uh, to be hoisting that trophy up at the end of the year. He was one win away last year, and that puts a chip on his shoulders. We definitely have one on ours with the weight the season in it. I told Coach DeBoer that night we met that it takes a man to come in here behind Coach Saban and, and uh, take this job. And then you sit there and listen to his vision he had he has for the program, and that says a lot about him and who he is. So this guy is speaking highly of Coach DeBoer. All right, and like I say, even after uh, Nick Saban retired, and and the announcement that Coach DeBoer was going to be the head coach, these guys stayed. These guys stayed. And a lot of other guys are staying. More is staying than going. That's all. <laughs> and that, that's fact. Yeah, matter of fact, the guys that freaking transferred, most of them transferred before Saban even retired. Most of them. After Saban retired, I think we done had a, Well, with Julian saying jumping in the portal, I think that's 29, maybe 30. So since Coach Saban retired, I think we lost like eight, nine, whatever. But most of them um, jumped in the portal before Saban even retired. And then Isaiah Bond jumped in the portal before the board was even hired. So, hey, it is what it is, baby. I keep trying to tell y'all, Alabama going to be all right. Everything going to be all right. <laughs> like they say. It's all right, it's all right. It's okay, it's okay. But anyway, these guys, man, they stand committed. They down with Coach Boar. Devontae Smith, another one. Who would have been starting, like I said, over Jack Lee Key, had it not been for injury. But anyway, he he kept it short. He kept it short. And the boy I trust. And if you ain't wearing crimson, you know the rest. You damn right. You right. And the boy he trusts, and if you ain't wearing crimson, you know the rest. You, it don't need to be said. Okay? But it's just like Deontay Lawson said. Roll with us or get rolled over. Alabama ain't going nowhere. And during this season, a lot of people are going to be disappointed because the Alabama Crimson Tide will still be the Alabama Crimson Tide. They will still be upholding the standard that Nick Saban has set. Some people say the standard is gone. The standard left with Nick Saban. You've been wrong about everything else when it comes to Alabama Crimson Tide, and you're definitely going to be wrong about this. But anyway, keep it moving. Jalen DeBoer, I mean, not Jalen DeBoer, Jalen Milrow in support of Kalen DeBoer also. Jalen Milrow said he was staying from the jump, from the jump, before the, the coach was even, well, the next coach was even announced. He put it out there that he was going to stay committed from the jump, and that's what I like. That's what I like. True commitment. 
Jalen Miro. Coach DeBoer stands out as one of the most successful and accomplished uh, offensive-minded college football coaches. His coaching style and approach bring good energy to the team. And yes, he is. He has proved himself as one of the best offensive-minded college football coaches. All right? Like I say, I don't care what you coach that, what level you coach that. When you win three championships out of five years in your first head coaching stint, you can't beat it. And like I told y'all before, name one other college football coach that did that. Name one. And yeah, ain't nobody got back with me with well, that answer yet. But anyway, and then to take a 4-18 and 18 and turn them the, your first season into a 10-2 and two team, then your second season, 14-1 and one. conference champion, appearance in the playoff, make it to the national championship game in your second season after taking over. A four and eight program. Mm, mm, mm. One of the most explosive offenses in the country. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. So imagine what this offense can be. This offense can be like the offense with with when Lane Kiffin went there, Steve Sarkeesian. All right. It can be that way. So hey, it is what it is. But anyway, I just wanted to put, put it out there that those players are standing firm with the Alabama Crimson Tide and with Coach Kalen DeBoer. All right. Next thing you know, we're going to be calling Coach DeBoer, Coach Debo, because he's going to be leading the Alabama Crimson Tide to beating everybody's ass. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Okay, so it is what it is. But last but not least, Coach DeBoer came out with a statement. Coach DeBoer came out with a statement, and I just can't leave him out. Because guess what? I'm going to support him to the fullest until he prove me wrong. All right? I got to see Alabama fall in order to believe it. But right now, I'm believing in uh, Coach DeBoer, and I'm going to continue to believe in him. But anyway, this is what he had to say. I was just growing, going through this two years ago, and this is a much better situation than even that that the one was with the number of players leaving. Mm, let's let's start that over again. I was just going through this two years ago, and this is a much better situation than even that one was with the number of players leaving. Okay, it's a much better situation than. When he was at first got to Washington with the amount of players leaving. Anyway, uh, we just stay the course. You roll up your sleeves. You damn right. There's such a uh, the, there's such a great group of leaders here in this program that want to uphold the standard of uh, Alabama football, and that they are sticking together. Yes, sir. And we want those guys who want to be here again, and we want those guys who want to be here. So Alabama fans, stop crying about the guys who don't want to be there. That's it. Anyway, they're working through all the noise that's out there. And I just couldn't be more proud of them sticking together and being intentional on communication with them, communicating with themselves and trying to keep, keep it tight, keep it together. A lot of these guys, they came here to leave a legacy, to build on a legacy, but also to leave a legacy. Uh, they look at, his, at it as their job is not done. Done. They're unfinished business with what they accomplished. Whether it's this year or in years past, we're really looking forward to locking arms as a team, as a staff, to continue to just work with these guys that are here. I really feel like we're in a great spot. We just got to stay the course, baby. Yeah, fans, we just got to stay the course with our team. Anyway, when you have uh, change and transition, there's going to be change with everything that's around the program. A lot of these programs are going through changes without transition of head coaches. Put that out there the other day. Naturally, you expect uh, that this is going to happen 
to some extent, and uh, and uh, we'll get we'll get the right people in the program, whether it's staff, whether it's players, and this is a place that's going to get. And this is a place that it's got the best facilities, the best resources in the entire country, and we're able to support the great players that come here with all that. And our guys, and I will tell the fans this as well, to be excited about the staff we're bringing in and what uh, we'll be capable of doing. I'm really not alarmed at all. Like me, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. The last line. And I would tell the fans this as well, to be excited about the staff we're bringing in and what we'll be able to accomplish, all right, or what we're capable of doing. I'm not alarmed at all. So why should we be alarmed? Because we want everything. Because we want everything. We don't want nobody to leave. Don't y'all know it's only 85 scholarship rosters? Come on now. These guys leaving, making room for somebody else to come in. These guys leaving, creating opportunity for players to step up, okay? You're going to see all the other talent that we had on this team sitting on the bench. And some of it, the talent might be better than the guys was left. Just like what Henry Toll told. We all knew that Deontay Lawson was a better linebacker than Henry Toll told. But Henry Toll told was in the game. Might be the same situation. So, stay the course. No need to be alone. So, I done put it out there. Let's support these daggone players. I know this video is long. But let's support the guys who stayed and let the ones who want to go, go. Just like the boy said. You want the guys who want to be there. That's all. That is it. Because mm, mm, mm. if they want to be there, that's when you're going to get the best out of them. Whether they two-star, two three-star, four-star, or five-star. If they want to be there, you'll get the best out of them. You can believe that. So, stop with all the crime. Please, please. I mean, all up in the conversation. Crying and whining. Oh, my goodness. Grown ass. Grown asses. 40, 50, 60s. Possibly 70 years old. I can't believe it. But anyway, Alabama fans, boy, we got a lot of work to do. Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is, man. I just want to let y'all know that these players, these leaders on the team is locked in, ready to rock and roll with Caleb DeBoer. In the future, he will be Coach Debo. Roll. Damn time.